to keep watching it, you can um, purchase uh, lifetime access to this the videos. Um, you can do that, but you you need to um, and y'all can drop a link if anybody wants to have lifetime access to these videos. Um, it is forty seven dollars right now, and you if you do that, you get access to a part of the webinar I will be giving um, in 2021, in which you will want to participate in. If you can see the, the wealth of knowledge we have now, you know that you'll um, definitely want to be a part of the webinar that we are going to do. Um, that's going to have, have you um, walk out some things yourself um, so that you can be a better entrepreneur, a better person, a leader, and uh, a more confident visionary. So um, the, um, that's the, the link. Thank you, Rachel, for doing that. And um, we want to keep this going, this momentum. And I am excited because one of my brothers is getting ready to come on, which I am so excited to have a part of the show. Um, and I will say that, hey, I see him over there. He is here. Um, this is one of my brothers. And I, I will say I met Terrence um, and we have, we're bringing him on in a second, but I want to read his bio and talk about him a little bit. Uh, I met him in college and he played uh, at Texas A&M University. And, and I will have to just speak highly of him because I remember meeting Terrence and I just talked to him and um, his spirit uh, and the person that he was, even as a young student, um, I could see the wisdom in him and his character over, like he had such a good character as, as a young man. He was a young athlete. And of course, you know, athletes, sometimes you hear the, the, the not so good side of athletes, but Terrence, even me knowing him, like he, he was just a good guy. And I, I spoke highly of his character. I even told my brothers in, in, that were in college. I was like, now this is the guy you need to be listening to. He's younger than you, but he know what he's talking about. So. Um, Appreciate that. Terrence, and Terrence, I want to read your bio right quick. And it's yeah. Terrence Murphy grew up uh, outside of Tyler, Texas in Chapel Hill. And after ex uh, extremely, uh, extremely successful career at Texas A&M University, whoop, he graduated class of 2005. He was drafted in second round, which was the 58th overall pick by the Green Bay Packers. That same year in, uh, in the NFL draft, after retiring from the NFL, real estate became his main focus and passion. He became a series investor and in, the, in the Texas real estate market. He has led multiple development and acquisition companies to multi-million dollar deal, uh, revenues and over 250 plus bed portfolios. Man, this is where... TM5 Properties originated and continues to grow and expand, which is this company. Terrence is blazing the trail for other pro athletes after retirement. Terrence is possessing the same traits that he portrayed on the football field, passion, work ethic, dedication, loyalty, desire to succeed, and knowledge, all of which he, he helps his clients receive superior service. So, Y'all, let's just welcome my brother. And I know I had to read all that, but Terrence, 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 woo, 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 what's up? Appreciate I, look, I have to thank you for being out there in College Station. Yeah, but appreciate I'm having. so excited. Thank you for being a part. Look, don't be nervous, Terrence. Um, <laughs> you chilling, you chilling. Oh, yeah, you know I don't get nervous. I don't even know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. I, I really, truly, I'm so grateful. This is the first web series in, um, that I've been able to put together. And, you know, I was saying, I, I have people that I don't know, but then I, I want, I was like, I got to call some people I know that I know that have been doing well. And Terrence, I remember from the beginning when you started real estate, and I know you were getting out of the NFL, you and Eric, your, your beautiful wife, y'all you, were getting ready to transition. And I think you were just getting married or you were going yep. to get married. Yep. Um, and you said, you know, I'm starting real estate. I want to get into it. And you had a mind. So you were already at the point of seeking knowledge. You begin to seek knowledge to get, get started in business in, in a different entity than what you're in. So mm -hmm. um, I guess I want to start off with that because 
what what did it take you and what information did you have to pull? And I know you did it because you came to me as one of the realtors. And I know you, I'm sure you went to school for it as well, but what what are those things you had to piece together to, to form your company to be where you are now? Yeah, I think it just starts out with um, something I like to tell people all the time is like find that something that you have a passion for. Because a lot of times people uh, look at entrepreneurship or starting a business or what career path they should go into. And it's like, it's hard to have a passion for something if you've not done it, but right. maybe something that you're interested in. So really find that. The other thing I encourage a lot of the young AM students and people that message me on social media is get a personality test done. You know, you can get a disc test done or you can get a briars a briars met you like there's all these different tests you can get done um and that will tell you your strengths your weaknesses and kind of like where you fit in the business world uh i wish i had somebody to give me that advice but yeah how i got into real estate i was just looking for something that i could be passionate about the same way that i carried myself in high school and college and in the nfl i wanted to do that in business but i wanted it to be something that god led me to so it was a lot of prayer in that and and i'm not saying prayer like you know, holier than thou, I was praying like, Lord, give me something to do. Like, right, um, right. because I was depressed and I had, you know, I had been paralyzed, I had that neck injury. Not a lot of people remember that part of my story. So coming out of that, I was just like, it doesn't matter if it's going back to school or being in, uh, in loan service or starting a financial firm. I just wanted something that I was passionate for. And so he led me to real estate. And you, I'm telling you, you did absolutely well doing it. He led you in the right place. That's awesome. You know, I was able to visit your office in College Station. I know, uh, you know, we, um, I didn't get to connect with you out there, but my sister and I, I had to go out there because I heard about it and I saw it when you posted it and I was like, I gotta go to the office and see how it is, you know? And I can tell you, you have just a beautiful office. Your staff is exceptional. Uh, everybody's functioning, you know, just in a capacity I'm just was so, proud of, you know, I, I feel like you know, a brother of mine, so it's like I feel proud, but, you know, um, even to say I'm connected in some kind of way, I'm like, oh, this is great, you know, and looking around, um, how did you find, or I, I have two questions. One, because I see how you build, you have a certain type of way you're building. You, it looks like you, you're trying to, you, you're not building in the same uh, vein as the normal developer. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the architecture, the design, that's one thing. And then, so building, physically building, and then how do you build the people yeah. to, to be, to function as they should to reflect you? Because I know you, but everybody don't know you. But when yeah. your people can reflect you properly, how, how, you do, how do you do that? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a story to that. And um, I didn't understand this about my personality until I got to college. And I grew up with a single mom um, who always wanted to start a business. She was never able to start a business, but she was had an entrepreneurial mind. But when you grow up with a single mom raising us, she taught us hard work. She taught us that, you know, you truly can become whatever you set your mind to. She always told me that. And that right. sounds so cliche, but when you get that poured into your head so much, you just believe it. And so um, when, I, when I decided, okay, what is the way that I wanna grow my business? I look back at my mom and my relationship with her and with the Lord, and I really focused on the Paul Timothy, right? So, um, you know, Paul and Timothy, he, he found his, Paul found his Timothy and he really poured into him. And then he obviously encouraged Timothy to find his other Timothy, right? So when I was in college, there was a thing called uh, Athletes in Action, and then there was FCA. Well, FCA was awesome, right? Fellowship Christian Athletes. But it never really appealed to me because it was more of a corporate setting. You would go in there and there'd be 50, 100 athletes worshiping and kind of more of a, it was kind of like a, an event. And then I met a, I met a pastor my freshman year called Jim Rosellis. And he said, hey, I'll meet with you every week. And it was more one-on-one -on -one discipleship. We met every week on Thursdays for two hours my whole career. Like literally probably in three and a half years, we might have missed four weeks. And we just got into the work. Uh, and so I took that relationship that he taught me how to pour into somebody one on one. And I started building my businesses that way. And in the beginning, you know, I wasn't thinking about scalability. I wasn't thinking about growth. 
I was just thinking about how do I hire Kristen or how do I hire Terrence or Erica and just pour into them and just coach them and love on them and try to make them the best real estate professional that I can make them. And that's really how it started. I started with the Paul Timothy kind of downline ministry thought process. And then I realized as we started growing, the more demand came our way. You know, we're we're about to hit a billion in sales. Um, and as a startup real estate company, wow. um, and it's not like we have hundreds of agents. Like we right. on average for a while had like 20 agents, but right. we were doing 140, 150 million a year in volume. So we're just growing, growing, growing. And then that's when I realized, okay, I can't personally mentor everybody. And so then the next process for me was to focus on exactly what Jesus did, right? He got his disciples. He said, I'm going to get my 12 mm -hmm. and then I'm going to teach them what I need to teach them and let them go out. But one of the things as I was studying that is um, Jesus actually has 72 more disciples. You don't hear much about them in the word of God, but he has 72 other disciples. And all that is, is just, he's growing leaders and letting those leaders grow more leaders. Right. That's, that's powerful, Terrence. I mean, you know, I think when you, when you were saying that gentleman, I, don't, I forgot his name that you said that poured into you those two hours a day, or, um, who was that? What was his name? Jim Rosellis. Um, what I see you're saying, you're giving much, you know, you're, you're pouring out. Like when I was saying it's more of a blessing to give than receive. Yep. And a lot of times, like, you know, I think Miss Barbara was talking beforehand about, you know, we, we always looking at, you know, okay, how much, how much am I make up in this deal? What am I do? You know, but sometimes it's not what um, you're going to make. It's sometimes what you're going to give, you know, um, yeah. or even Jenna talked about if you want to set your projections and project how much you're going to tithe, you know, mm -hmm. how much am I going to tithe? And then you backtrack and that's how much you're going to make, you know? So I'm looking at what you're telling me is that that, that gentleman poured into you then now you have the same spirit to pour into other people, you know, and you almost reaching a billion dollars. That's, that is not just a little piece of money. So, I mean, that's huge. You know, um, people talk about it, but you're able to see it. Now you're in development as well. Mm -hmm. And I know real estate and development, that, that hand in hand, it goes together, which was smart move. What, mm -hmm. um, what projects are you doing right now? Yeah, I think, so it's cool because, you know, we talk about entrepreneurs and what I've learned, like I didn't even understand that word growing up. Like I didn't know what I just, you know, you just do stuff, right? I had my first business when I was 12 years old. Right. And um, my which mom, was, huh? Which was what? A lawnmower business. Oh, okay. So, you know, we grew up in the country, right? So we were 30, 40 minutes outside of the city. And so right. um, in order for us to go get milk or groceries, we had to get in the truck or car and go. But we were headed to the doctor and uh, and I'm gonna get into the question you asked me, but I wanna tell this quick story. Um, we we're headed to the doctor and I told my mom, I wanna have my own business. I wanna start a business. And she said, well, you know, what do you wanna do? I said, I'm gonna start a lawnmower business. She said, well, we're going to the doctor today. You need to ask the doctor and see if you can mow his property. Well, either way, she's like, now you don't go in there and embarrass me. You need to understand what you're gonna say. So she was putting me up to how am I going to go over my value proposition? What am I going to say? What is going to be my scripts? I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. And then I went in and sold the doctor, the dentist, and I had three or four commercial buildings that we didn't have a truck. I would put my lawnmower in the back, tie a rope on the car, have my little gas can and my weed eater. She'd take me to the city, drop me off, and I would mow all these commercial properties and sit under the tree and wait on her to come back to get me. And I'm telling that story to say, as entrepreneurs, we have to go on our own journey. Yeah but it's gotta be led by something. And mine is faith-based. Now, everybody to each his own, there's all love on my end, but I always tell that part because truly what I'm doing is I'm not, when I hire you or bring you on as a client, I'm bringing you into my family. Right. And we like, we just had a thing called Rejuvenate Day, something that has been a dream for me to do. Mm -hmm. So for the whole day, we brought it in. It's actually on our Facebook page, but for the whole day we brought it in and um, we brought in, a, psychologist we did sunrise yoga we had smoothies we did um like healthy lunches we brought in a trainer an enneagram coach and we just pretty much had a whole day where we're just like investing back in our staff because we want them to be rejuvenated so the reason why i would say i feel like our businesses are really growing because we care about the people in the business yes you know and because i was an athlete i know what it feels like to just be used up and kind of discarded 
And right. I never want my team to ever feel that way. So we really go out of our way to let them know we love them, we appreciate them, and then they're helping us grow our vision. So yeah. that was a long story to say that. But yeah, what we are okay. doing um, is obviously I'm doing development. TM5 is our real estate brokerage. Um, the Terrence Murphy team is our expansion team that we're getting ready to expand around the state of Texas. Murphy Signature Homes is our construction company. We're building these like really modern contemporary houses. Um, but yeah, if you, you know, people always ask me, man, you seem like you got a lot going on. And I'm like, I do, because that's what I'm an entrepreneur. I have to stay busy. And um, we had a company try to acquire our brokerage a couple of years ago and we turned the offer down. And I tell my wife, if we don't take this offer, then I got to start doing some of these other ventures and these ideas that I have. So on our website, it's got all of our ventures kind of laid out what we're doing. Y'all can drop that website too, if you don't mind, Rachel, dropping that. That's, I mean, uh, you, you're also doing a podcast and you just started that, which I got to listen to a few um, of the podcasts, which are great, great uh, nuggets of knowledge. Check out his podcast as well, guys. Um, now, you, now I think, Terrence, and I'm listening to you, but your gift as an entrepreneur, you started with a foundation with your mom, one, grooming you, two, you had a work ethic that is poured into, like you said, football, and then now working and poured in your family. Um, then you breaking down character, because I know you're a man of character um, and a man of faith. Now, what are, I guess, and I would ask you the top three most important things a person in a high position or a place where you have to uh, run multiple things at one time. What are the three traits a person like that needs to have in order to be successful? No, that's great. So what I would encourage the person to do first off is understand what they want, right? Like, what do you want as a leader? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Why are you getting up? Like, what's your big why? You know, because if you're just chasing somebody else's vision or their dream or because you saw them post this photo of this car or whatever it is, I'm not saying don't be motivated by it, but what do you really want in your heart? And that takes some self-seeking. That takes looking in the mirror, praying, studying, researching and saying, what do I really want? For me, I want to work for myself. I want to build businesses that inspire people to be the best versions of themselves. It's very clear. I make it very simple when I say that. And the best version of yourself is not only just in the workplace, but it's in your health, it's in your mental wellness, it's in the way that you impact people outside of the workplace. So that is like one of the reasons I started these businesses. But I also wanted to be able to leave a legacy for my children and that they can understand that, yes, you can go to college, but you can start working in some of you know, our businesses and help us grow. Them. And so that's really, understand that at first. What's your big why? And why are you doing it? Why are you getting up? The next thing I would say is, um, who do you have around you as leaders on your team? Like who, because they always say um, your vision is only going to go as far as the five people you have around you. And I learned that the hard way, like I was the one casting the vision, but I didn't have the right team. But as I started putting the right people around me, man, my vision just started expanding. And so making sure that you are touching those five to seven people and you don't have to have a big organization. You can have, a, you can have an organization of 10 people, but if those five people that are interacting with you that you're pouring into and you're making sure they're the right people, then that's, that's key. And then the last thing I would say is you need an operating system. Because if you're a visionary, which most entrepreneurs are, yes. um, there, there's a book called Traction by Gino Whitman. And then there's another one called Rocket Fuel. He said there's a visionary and then there's an integrator. So you really need to understand who you are. Are you the person with the vision or are you good at the operations? And then you find that and you find that operating system. What kind of systems are you going to build so that you can consistently build a business where you get the same result? That's good. System. Building system. That's, and so you can, you can think, you can reflect, and then you can push out. Yeah. That's important. I, I, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, you Go need ahead. a big why. You need your big why, you need the five people around you, and then you need to know what your systems are going to be. Because obviously at some point, it's almost like if you go to an Apple store in San Antonio or you go to an Apple store in New York, you get a similar co consumer experience. And with yeah. any business, whether you're in a hair salon or a car wash or you're selling real estate, you have to create a repeatable process. 
And the only way to do that is sitting down and ironing out those systems and then documenting those systems. Question, when you, you talked about, you know, before you learned the hard way on putting the right people around you, mm -hmm. you said um, you, sh you should have did it a different way maybe, or you learned, you know, you learned something different. So for the entrepreneur that's just starting out and they're like, okay, well, I'm just around my family. What are those things um, that they need to do as individuals to, um, or to find out someone outside of their comfort zone, if that makes any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what I could have did differently is exactly what I'm telling them now. Understand your big why and what your vision is. That's key. Mm -hmm. Like you need to understand that. Then two, find the five people around you and I didn't say this earlier, that complement your strengths and weaknesses. Because if you bring in somebody who is a type A and you bring in five type A people and they're all good at sales, that's not a good leadership team. That's not a team around you. So it's like, well, if I'm a type A salesperson, then I need someone, obviously, that's not as, as aggressive as me, but it's really good at operations. Then you find somebody else that's really good at, and you kind of build that, that team around you. So find people that complement you that don't take away from your skill set. And then the third one was those systems, the repeatable processes, uh, the McDonald's of the world, the Henry Ford model, something that can be done over and over again, just like iPhones and Mac computers. And obviously take that into a different space, but how do you give a consumer or a client a, a five-star experience every time they interact with somebody on your team? Wow, five-star experience. That's important, customer service. So you get a bad review, say you get a bad review. What do you do to uh, fix that? What, what, what's your process? Yeah, so we, we, we take our reviews really serious. Obviously you can Google T and five properties right now and see like we, I think we have over 700 five star reviews. Um, so we take those reviews seriously. If we do have a review that's not to the level in which we expect, the first thing we do is reach out to the person who, who interacted with this client. So on our team, because we want to look inward first. We never want to assume and we never want to go straight to the client. We want to look inward first. We figure out what happened there, get the story, understand the steps. If they tell us up front, I did a bad job, then great. We come with a different speed and we try to own that and, you know, deal with it. But it, either way, we identify it in-house first and then we go to that person. We try to fix that relationship. If it's not fixable, we understand, we, we wish you well, but then we come back and say, okay, what system can we put in place to fix this going forward? And the key thing I've learned through EOS, he says, people in process. He said, always ask yourself that. If you have an issue as an entrepreneur, all you gotta ask yourself, is it the process or is it the person? Yeah. That's gonna always be one or two of those things. And then we just try to identify what that is and fix it. That's what's up, that's awesome. That's yep. awesome. I do have, I want to reflect on just one thing before we get off, but you, you are a minister as well. And so uh, balancing that life and then you have three beautiful children. Um, how do you balance that time? Time blocking. Um, you know, I tell everybody like, you know, if you know the Lord, you're a minister. Even if you don't have the official, you haven't been ordained, um, you're doing God's work every day in your inner circle, in your sphere of influence. But I would just say time blocking. Like I really try to manage my time on my calendar. And um, I try to really make sure that I block, like this is as simple as on Thursdays is the day that I block out for my wife. So Thursdays, we started off with just date day. So I mean, date lunchtime. And then it just kept expanding. Now it's nine to three. And from nine to three, don't bother me. I'm with my wife. And so really just taking those, those things serious. Um, and making sure like I get home every day, 5.30, 6 o'clock. I don't work late at the office anymore. I get home to be with my kids because work will always be there. Right, absolutely. It, it never yeah. fails. <laughs> and that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome, Tim. But, you know, I'm grateful for you. And I thank you for these nuggets. I hope you guys are taking notes. Uh, Terrence, he's the real deal. He's not playing and, and you know, he's making, I know, I know him personally. So I know that he's doing these things that he says. Uh, and I'm not in your house, but I'm saying I know <laughs> business-wise, you yeah. know, doing these things. So I'm yeah. so grateful for you being a part of this show. Like, this is my first show, and this is a dream come true. And um, you you know, 
Um, just keep doing what you're doing, Terrence. I mean, and you, you know, I'm rooting for you over here in Fulcher and um, just, you know, keep pressing in. I definitely will be referring, uh, Sigrid will referring over there in College Station, you're my referral person. So um, yeah. blessings to you and your family and everything. And ladies and gentlemen, um, just thank Mr. Terrence Murphy for being a part of this show. Terrence, thank you, thank you. Check out Terrence's website. Um, put, make sure you put his uh, website on the link. Um, Terrence, is it terrencemurphy.com? Yeah, you just go to terrencemurphy.com. That's my enterprise site. Obviously, all my companies have individual sites. That's probably the easiest one. And then obviously the podcast is just Real Estate Entrepreneur Podcast with Terrence Murphy. It's on Spotify. It's on uh, iTunes. The whole, it's, on, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So go check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Love you too. See you later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for always encouraging me to go to church in college. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. you know it. I love you. Yeah. Bye -bye.